and a pleasant good morning. Day two, Geo Week 2024. Yesterday was a bit of a shorter day, so I'm excited to actually walk the rest of the exhibit hall today and uh, meet some new people, see what they're up to, see what kind of technology is out there. I've also got a presentation today discussing serving and geomatic curriculums at universities and on online education platforms. So, should be exciting. Trent. Morning, Robbie. How are you, buddy? Good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Tell me more about Get Kids Into Survey. Get Kids Into Survey. It's just a, a great initiative. Obviously, started in the UK. We're bringing the boots on the ground to the US and just trying to build the brand and the initiative of looking for local industry supporters to help uh, any way they can, sponsor a poster, sponsor a homework project. Uh, we can just even do some reprints for the posters as well with your logo and branding on there. But it's just a fun, interactive way to, uh, to kind of give back to the Get Kids Initiative, use it as a branding and uh, logo recognition type stuff for your own company, and then have just fun uh, fun characters you can create. This is my uh, one of my characters I turned into a, a stuffed animal. This is Miss Camaro, my German Shepherd. So, we've got comic books, we've got tons of resources for you to get out in front of the kids and uh, and talk to them about uh, about a career in surveying. So, very good, it. awesome. How has the uh, American division been? I mean, has it been growing? Have people been getting really involved in it? It's it's a slow, it's slow going, right? Uh, the appetite for outreach has not been there, and so it's uh, changing that culture of getting people out and wanting to get involved and give back. So, as uh, as we're aging workforce and you know all the numbers start to dwindle, people start to realize that there is a need to uh, kind of uplift the next generation, and so we're. It's a slow roll and snowball at this point. Oh yeah, but that also means that there's a lot of opportunities for anyone to get involved. One hundred percent. Not a lot of people yep. are there yet, so yep. you could be one of the first yep. people there. Exactly. Simple. You could be as simple as a, just a brand ambassador. Somebody wants to kind of help push the initiative and go to the school. So, tons awesome. of ways to get involved. Awesome. How do people get in touch with you guys? The easiest way is just getkidsintosurvey.com. Nice. All right. Thank I you. Love it. Yeah. with CEC Navigation, and this is the Apache 3 uh, USV. What this does is bathymetric surveys, it has a single beam echo sounder below, it has a 360 camera, collision avoidance, built-in GPS, enough battery power for 48 hours of work, and um, comes in three different, different models. Apache 4, a little bit bigger boat, which um, allows for ADCP sensors. And the Apache 6, you can use a multi-beam solution, a Norbit solution on below for, for the multi-beam. So that pretty much covers all three of these. They're all bathymetric survey boats um, from the basic entry level all the way down up to the, um, the full multi-beam solution. Very good. G'day, so I'm Matt from AutoMap. Um, I'm the founder of AutoMap. We commercialize Wildcat Slam technology with the Australian CSIRO into mapping and robotics products, predominantly for mining, construction, AEC, and other outdoor like, driving mapping uh, applications. Today here we've got the Velus. The Velus is our latest system that's aimed at road mapping. It integrates a GPS that's hardware coupled to the Slam stack. We've got uh, four 4K color cameras, and we use the the, the, the actual video to colorize the map in real time, so you don't have to stop to take any images. And we also automatically realign for drift using PPK GPS. So I think we're the only solution that actually incorporates hardware coupled PPK GPS into the actual SLAM pipeline. And what that means is you can fit the system to a vehicle just using magnet mounts, pop it straight on, and then the, you can start scanning just by hitting one button and you can drive 20, 30 kilometers, capture your data, process all the data on device, there's no subscription fees, and make, like, ensure that the data is both accurate using PPK GPS, but also making sure that it's on data. So we automatically transform the maps to put them on data.
Nick, how are you, my friend? How's it going, Robbie? Good, good. Tell us more about VGIS and what you're doing with uh, VSite. Well, here what you see is former VGIS and the current VSite, which combines digital twin and augmented reality in one solution to simplify construction management. There are multiple things that you can look at. So we have a digital twin, examples right here. Explains how it takes uh, your data in different formats, BIM, GIS, reality capture, point clouds, and creates a almost real-time digital twin of your construction site so that you can use it on your desktop in the office to manage, uh, to manage your project, or you can use it in the field while sitting in a truck enjoying Denver weather, <laughs> or you can switch to augmented reality and then view the same data with centimeter level accuracy on site as you walk around the job site. There are several other applications we can discuss the indoor and outdoor use of the system. So we have a demo set up for the indoor MEP HVAC uh, structural. So stop by our booth 635 and we'll give you a full rundown. Nice. And there's the virtual. Nice, I love that. And that moves with the, when you move the iPad, it moves with it. Oh, absolutely. So it's designed to stay locked to the ground, to the features. So as you move around, it will just follow you, and you will see all the data where it's supposed to be. Very cool. So I'm over at the Wingtra booth and they've got a new announcement for a new product. Let's take a look and see what they've got. Hi Nina. Hi. Tell me a little bit more about what you guys have to offer. So today we're launching officially our new LiDAR payload. So far we've been mainly in the photogrammetry game and we really wanted to offer the missing link to our customers. So we are now launching our LiDAR. Here it is. We partnered with Inertial Lab. It really helps to have maxima, maximum efficiency on the field. So there's no calibration needed. One minute initialization and then you can take off and go. The cross-processing is also really easy. There's no need to do strip alignments because it comes really great out of the hardware immediately. So you save a lot of time in the cross-processing as well. And on top of that, uh, it's a very easy workflow. So you can have different pilots playing the same area and coming out with very similar results. All right, so I'm heading into my session right now at the Academic Hub. Hopefully my presentation goes well. Is this gonna work? Is there a way to get rid of the table? We could put the chairs in front of the table. That could work, yeah. We don't really need it. Yeah, we can move it to the back, I think that would work. All right. Here, I'll move these out of the way. We are missing a speaker. Here's your clicker. Oh, thank you. Where is JB? I'll stand and mentally prepare. Yeah, here he comes. <laughs> so this um, is going to be a series of presentations, but we have a little set a session at the a section at the end for a little bit of open discussion. Um, and if this is about building, you know, what does the modern curriculum look like for remote sensing and geomatics in today's online, virtual, challenging world? Awesome, cool. Well, thanks, Karen. Appreciate that. Hello everybody, my name is Rami Tamimi. Um, I am happy to open the session with my perspective on online education as it relates to the surveying, geomatics, remote sensing, you know, the geospatial uh, curriculum. A few minutes later. Thank you all for listening and I'm open to hearing your questions. All right, that's a wrap for day two. Be sure to come back tomorrow for day three of GeoWeek 2024.